Hi all, so in this video we get to see about the synthesis as well as the mechanism of action of thyroid hormones. So the synthesis as well as mechanism of action can be asked as a part of an essay question or as short essay questions. So we'll quickly see the basic concept regarding this. So what are the different steps of thyroid hormone synthesis? So we've got at least six steps in the synthesis of thyroid hormone. So we'll see each one by one. So of this, it is very important that we supplement this answer with the help of a neat label diagram. So we'll see what it is. So suppose, so this is a thyroid follicular cell. So we know that the basic raw materials required for protection of thyroid hormone synthesis is iodine as well as thyroglobin. So our first step must be to take the iodide from the blood into the follicular cell. So for that, we've got a specialized pump which is called sodium iodide symporter so here the main action of the sodium iodide symporter is to transport iodide as well as sodium into the follicular cell now this is an active pump which means it, it requires the help of sodium potassium ATPase pump so this is our first step which is iodide trapping so now once the iodide is inside the follicular cell it has to be taken to the other side of the cell for the production of hormone so we've got another channel for that which is called the pentrin which is a iodide chloride exchanger so now the iodide is outside that means on the other side of the cell but it has to be converted to iodine for its a production of thyroid hormone so for that we've got another hormone called another enzyme called peroxidase which will convert this iodide to iodine so this is our second step which is conversion of iodide to iodine with the help of peroxidase then what happens then our next step is thyroglobin synthesis as well as organification so from where is thyroglobin synthesized thyroglobin is synthesized within the follicular cell from the endoplasmic reticulum so from the endoplasmic reticulum it uh, is packaged via the golgi apparatus and we've got this thyroglobin precursor which is then uh, transported outside the follicular cell so this is the thyroglobin and what do you mean by organification the combination of iodine to thyroglobin is called organification so this is the second step which is thyroglobin synthesis and organification then what happens is with the help of this enzyme peroxidase we've got the coupling reaction coupling reaction is nothing but combination of this thyroglobin with iodide Form, which forms different forms like MIT that is monoidothyronin, diidothyronin as well as the T3 and T4 which are the basic thyroid hormones. So this is called the coupling reaction. And once so basically we've got these thyroid hormones bound to this thyroglobin molecule in this format. And now what happens suppose the body needs the thyroid hormone. It, these T3 and T4 must be released, right? So for that, we've got the next step, which is called proteolysis of thyroglobin. What does that mean? The thyroglobin is taken back into the cell by the help of pinocytosis and it is engulfed by a lysosome so that the proteases present inside the lysosome will break it down into MIT, DIT as well as T3 and T4. So of this, we want only T3 and T4 out into the blood. So what will happen to MIT and DIT? They will be deiodinated so that the iodine can be recycled for the production of more thyroid hormone. So this will be proteolyzed to release iodine so that it can be taken back for the production of thyroid hormone. Whereas this T3 and T4 can be secreted out. So this T3 and T4 will be secreted out. So the different forms of thyroid hormone that are released are T3, T4 and reverse T3. So this is how the thyroid hormone is synthesized, right? So we'll just see each step in detail once again. So what was the first step? The first step was iodide trapping in which we saw that the iodide has to be taken into the follicular cell. So for that we've got a channel named sodium iodide symporter and it is going to take the iodide against electrical and chemical gradients. Okay, so that is why we need a pump for that and the hormone TSH that is thyrotropin stimulating hormone induces the expression of this NIS pump. Okay, so that is how this TSH is able to stimulate the production of T3 and T4. And as I said, it is an active transport 
is as an active pump it which requires atp okay now the second step was conversion of iodide to iodine so in this we said first there should be an oxidation for that we need the help of the enzyme thyroid peroxidase so iodide is oxidized to iodine with the help of this thyroid peroxidase and it occurs in the epical membrane of the follicular cell that means this part of the follicular cell the third step was thyroglobin synthesis in which we said that it is produced from the rough endoplasmic reticulum and then it is packed into the golgi apparatus and finally it is secreted into the follicular lumen with the help of exocytosis now this it is important i i'm just uh, explaining some clinically relevant points also here see for example if you have antibodies to this thyroglobin globulin it can present as hashimoto thyroiditis so it would look something like this you will have a goiter and it is basically beca basically because of auto antibodies to thyroglobulin right okay so now let's move on we said a next step is thyroglobulin synthesis as well as organification what do you mean by organification the iodine will bind to the tyrosine residues on thyroglobulin and that is called organification okay so we have mit and dit formation during this organification so what was the channel that was involved in transport of iodine here it was pendrin now that is also an important point so here also we've got a clinical note see if there is a mutation in this pendrin channel we've got a syndrome called pendrit syndrome basically in pendrit syndrome it occurs in children in which you have sensory neural hearing loss as well as goiter because both in this both the channel pendrin is affected so that is called pendrit syndrome similarly there is another concept called wolf chekhov effect what is wolf chekhov effect if there are high iodine levels it can inhibit organification temporarily see just because there are there is more iodine the body don't want more thyroid hormone to be produced we just want thyroid hormone sufficient for the body so even in in case there is a lot of iodine entering the blood or entering the thyroid follicular cell by this wolf chekhov effect temporarily the thyroid hormone synthesis can be stopped so that is meant by wolf chekhov effect okay next is our coupling reaction so it's in the coupling reaction that you have the formation of the thyroid hormones so when two iodinated tyrosine residues like if dit and dit combine they form thyroxine which is t4 and if mit and dit combine we have triiodothyronine which is called t3 so the iodinated uh, tyrosines they combine together to form the active thyroid hormone and this is catalyzed by thyroid peroxidase now this is a very important enzyme when it comes to production of thyroid hormone and then we said our next step is proteolysis so thyroglobulin is endocytosed by the follicular cells from the colloid it will fuse with the lysosome leading to proteolysis releasing t3 t4 as well as mit and dit so here also we've got a um, clinical note see suppose uh, in case we've got iron deficiency there will be defective proteolysis so there will be reduced hormone release and not, not only that anti thyroid drugs like suppose you have hyperthyroidism we don't want more uh, thyroid hormones to be produced so thus in such cases we give them anti thyroid drugs like methimazole and its mechanism of action is inhibition of proteolysis so these are two clinical uh, notes when it comes to the proteolysis of thyroglobulin right and what's the final step secretion of hormone so t3 and t4 is secreted is released into the circulation and we said mit and dit will be deiodinated so that the iodine can be used for future use so here the enzyme that is required to um, deiodinate mit and dit are called iodotyrosine deiodinase deiodinase means removal of iodine so thus we have this enzyme iodotyrosine which will help in the recycling of mit to dit to release iodine okay so these are the different steps of thyroid hormone synthesis so how much hormone is produced so the basic uh, hormonal output is approximately 80 microgram of t4 and 5 microgram of t3 are secreted daily but here t3 is more biologically active so what happens is t4 will be converted to t3 in the periphery so we've got more amount of t4 and less amount of t3 but t3 is more active okay so that is why t4 will be converted to t3 in the periphery 
So thus we have seen the different steps in the synthesis of thyroid hormone. So remember when you have a short essay based on this question, you have to write the steps as well as the relevant clinical applications. Don't forget about the Pender syndrome and about the antithyroid drugs which will inhibit proteolysis. Okay. So next we'll just so now let's see about the mechanism of action. So this thyroid hormone that is released, it has got a genomic action as well as a non-genomic action. What do we mean by genomic action? Genomic action means it is going to enter into the cell and going, going to affect the gene transcription. That is a genomic action and this is the predominant type of mechanism of action. But we've also got non-genomic actions and that is, causes, that is a cause for rapid action of thyroid hormones. So this occurs by modulating by or by acting via the second messengers. So we'll just see the genomic action of uh, thyroid hormone. So suppose this is the cell, the cell cytoplasm and we've got the nucleus. So the hormone that is released that is T3 and T4, they both can diffuse into the cell. Does not, uh, they do not, because they are amine hormones, they do not require a cell surface receptor. So they can just diffuse into the cell. The T4 can be converted to T3 by the help of an enzyme called deiodinase. So T4 will be converted to T3. And this T3 can enter into the nucleus. And what it does is it will bind on to a specific region on the gene called the thyroid response element. So there on the thyroid response element, they've got a receptor which is called the thyroid hormone receptor. So what is the thing next to this thyroid hormone receptor? That is a retinoid X receptor. So they act like a heterodimer. They are always together. So thyroid hormone receptor along with retinoid X receptor is located on the thyroid hormone response element. So this T3 will bind on to the thyroid hormone and thus it can cause transcription of genes which in turn will be converted to mRNA and can cause production of specific proteins. So this is how the genomic action of thyroid hormone takes place. So we'll see this in the form of a flowchart also. The thyroid hormone enter the cell by diffusion, bind to the nuclear receptor, it binds to the hormone response element of DNA, it causes activation of transcription protein synthesis and thereby physiologically fix up reduced. So this is a mechanism of thyroid hormone. I hope you understood the concept. Thank you.